gonna try again. Hello, healers and health seekers. How is everybody today? I hope you are hanging in there and using all the tools that you can to keep a light heart. Um, I was just talking to a friend of mine and we were thinking and talking about the way we came to the medical medium information. And it made me want to share my story of how I came to the medical medium information because I really do believe it was divine providence. I think absolutely there was divine intervention that got me to the books. <clears throat> I haven't really talked yet today, so excuse me for clearing my throat. Um, also, while I'm talking, I might be uh, filling up tinctures. Um, I use these little spice jars for my tinctures. Uh, for my whole family's tinctures, I do everybody's at once, and then I have like a little measuring cup that I use that are marked with the marks of like three droppers, four droppers, and six droppers, because those are the amounts we tend to use. If it's one dropper, I just use the actual dropper, but um, it just makes it go quicker, <laughs> so I don't have to do other droppers a bunch of times. Anyway, that's neither here nor there, and I can do a separate video about that, but... Um, what I want to talk about today is how I got, how I found the medical medium information and that whole story, because I really do think like it was, it was a pretty amazing story to me when I think about it. And I've heard so many other people tell their stories about how they found the medical medium information and it really does seem to come down to divine intervention in so many cases. Um, it's amazing. So here's my story. Um, when I found medical medium information in 2015 is when I heard about and found medical medium. But I didn't read the book until 2016, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so in 2015, a friend of mine in chronic illness, my like my best friend in chronic illness, she was my best friend at the time. And, but we were like chronically ill together. Like we were both um, homeschooling moms. We both had kids who had symptoms. We both had debilitating chronic illness. And um, so we had a lot of similarities and we were in an online group together anyway. And she and I used to talk like every day. And so, um, and then one day she said, you know, I've heard about this guy, Anthony William. He's like a medical medium. And the thing is, is so she and I, I'll say this first, uh, she and I like both studied a lot together. We did a ton of research and we were both into like biomed and um, both conventional and alternative, like kind of covering the whole gamut of like resources out there. And so we both did a ton of research and we were both eating like uh, GAPS slash SCD slash paleo style diets um, slash keto and, you know, high protein, high fat and thought that was the answer, although it was clearly not because it made all of us much much sicker and we were losing foods left and right and so we were like autoimmune paleo low oxalates low high low fodmap all that stuff anyway it was all getting us sicker and sicker and sicker and um and because we were in similar chronic illness communities it's like you sort of started to see it out there so of course we were talking about other possibilities and other answers and like, well, how can we, you know, there's got to be an answer, right? So um, in one of our many, many talks, I think we would talk like every day at that time. Uh, in one of our many, many talks, she said, you know, a friend of mine was telling me about this guy, Anthony William, and he's like this medical medium guy. And she's been like using his, you know, she saw him and um, she's been having really good results with her kid, her child, and even for herself. And 
she's like, I think we ought to check him out. And then she's, you know, so we, we were talking about him and then she said, hey, he's on this Hay House Summit. He's going to be talking. This is the guy I told you about. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, great. So I watched or listened to, I guess. I listened to the Hay House Summit. And, um, oh, I kind of forgot to talk about all my symptoms. So I just said buddies and chronic illness, right? But at the time, what I was suffering with, oh, my God, I, <laughs> innumerable symptoms, like over 100 symptoms. And, um... But I think, I guess I would say the most prevalent ones being like the deepest fatigue I'd ever experienced in my life to the point where I literally could not walk. Like there was one point at which I had had a good day because anyone in chronic illness knows that there are good days and bad days. And those are, well, uh, case by case and also you know user defined because it's like a good day in chronic illness can look very good different from a good day in a healthy person's life um it would probably be like the worst day in a healthy person's life or even worse than that is a good day in chronic illness but anyway uh so I was having a good day and I went miniature golfing with my son and at, at, when we were leaving and my husband and we were leaving and then went out into the parking lot and I got like halfway out I was 50 feet away from the car and I literally could not walk anymore I just like ran out of gas to the point where like literally like a car out of gas couldn't push myself to go for forward or further um just ran out of gas just that was it couldn't walk anymore and I told my husband, I was like, I can't go any further. And because he knew I was chronically ill, he was like, okay. And he went and got the car and got, took me home. That was an, ex that's an example of like what it was like as far as the fatigue. Um, actually that was a really good day that I could even go out and play miniature golf because the fatigue got so bad that, uh, I couldn't even shower and I couldn't even, um, prepare food or, do anything fold laundry everything was such a herculean task and uh i had had chronic pain mostly in my back for over 20 years but it had spread to my whole entire body and i had a diagnosis of fibromyalgia i was allergic to the world i had a diagnosis of mast cell activation disorder um i had pots which is um, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome where your heartbeat goes nuts. <laughs> uh, it, it's a very irregular and, and can speed up and slow down um, depending on the position that you're in. So like sitting to standing or you can't bend over. You can't bend over, you'll pass out. So I couldn't bend over. Um, and it the symptoms vary for POTS, but fatigue is definitely one of them. Pain can be one of them. Um, and the and fainting can be a symptom and dizziness and stuff like that anyway so i had all that <laughs> migraines and all kinds of i mean i had so many things heart palpitations and eye floaters and um you know all the insomnia and all kinds of stuff i'm not going to go too deep into my symptoms but because there were so many it was like over 100 and if i i'd be here all day so <laughs> Um, the point is, is brain fog was also a huge symptom. And so, um, it was, even though I did a bunch of research and stuff like that, like it was my full-time job, I had a lot of brain fog at that time. And it, oh, it was like, I would have to read the same things over and over again, just to even get them a little bit. And my retention was really bad. I had also, um, what sort of spiraled my symptoms a lot was um, I had had a concussion uh, and a big mold exposure and these are the two triggers that really spiraled symptoms for me and um, so things really went out of control then and that's when my health just took a really big nosedive and um, anyway so I was you know 
on mattress island, as they say, or couch island. I lived on the sofa. I'd get up out of bed and then just be on the sofa all day. Um, my husband would make our food for me and my son for the day, and I would put it in the toaster oven. It was about the most I could do. And even that was sometimes a questionable activity, um, whether or not I could do that. And so, and showering only could happen like once a week or it was bad. So back to my friend, you know, me listening to the Hay House Summit. I listened to that summit with Anthony William, the medical medium, and I listened to him. And as he spoke, I thought, this guy has, he is saying the one thing I've been asking all my doctors all this time, because I'd seen so many doctors and so many practitioners and so many specialists and, and of all kinds, conventional and alternative. And, um, and I'd ask them all the same question. If they'd give me a diagnosis, I'd say, great. So what's the root cause of that? And what do we do about it? How can we heal it? And they would always say, oh, uh, we don't know, but here's some drugs. Here's a prescription. And I was like, well, I'm allergic to almost every pharmaceutical. <laughs> I can't take these drugs. Um, there were very, very, very few pharmaceuticals that I could tolerate. And I had all my medications that I could tolerate were compounded. Anything I would try had to be compounded. I don't know if you've ever tried to compound medications, but it costs significantly more because insurance companies don't usually pay for compounded medication. And if they do, they only pay half. So anyway, it was very expensive, but um, whatever. Uh, and, and I would react to almost every medication they'd give me, like bad reactions. One, one medication, Ketodafin, that they prescribed for me made me immediately violent. Like I had these just like insane violent thoughts and I just felt violent. And I was like, you know, like I, it was crazy. Like I was in just like, I like a crazy rage. Like I've totally out of character for me. And I was like, uh, no, called the pharmacist. And I was like, what is this? I've never had this before. And, uh, and he, it took him like 15 minutes, but he looked it up. If you are somebody who ever takes medications, um, your pharmacist knows way more than your doctor about what those medications do and how they interact with things. I will say pharmacists are incredible because that pharmacist took the time to actually look it up and he found it. And it took him like 15 minutes looking it up because he was like, I've never heard of that. But he said, actually, it is listed as a side effect of this medication, but it's like a very rare one. And I'm like, well, welcome to my life, because if it's rare, I'm going to have it <laughs> right here. <laughs> I'm like, well, you'll be hearing from me more. No, but um, I will say the compounding pharmacy, they were great because, you know, you could call the pharmacist anytime and have like real conversations about the medications and the interactions and all that stuff. And that was very educational um, and very helpful for me at that time. But it didn't mean that I didn't react to everything I tried to take. So um, that didn't, medications never worked out for me. They didn't help my symptoms because I couldn't take them. Um, and now that I know what pharmaceuticals really are and what they do in the body uh, I'm really glad for that because <laughs> they just would have done more damage if I could have okay so we're back to the book right so I listened to that Hay House Summit and in my brain fog I thought wow this guy has answers because he was actually saying there are answers there is a root cause to these illnesses there's a root cause to autoimmune there's a root cause to fibromyalgia to ms to lyme to all of it there's a root cause and you can heal and i was like well i am listening <laughs> i need to know more and this was right before his book came out so you could pre-order it so i listened to that and remember 
lots of brain fog. And then whatever happened, happened after that, because that was in 2015, probably September or October or something like that, because it was right before I think the book was, it was available for pre-order, but it was before it came out. So whatever that was. And lots of brain fog. So in 2016, in June, one day, I was having a good chronic illness day. And I thought, hey, I might be able to read a book today. I hadn't been able to read in a long time because of brain fog. I could read short things, maybe an article here or there, which I did because I did research like it was my literal paid job and like my life depended on it because it did, I thought, and <laughs> at the time. And um, I looked on my Kindle and now remember, the last thing I remember about this situation is that I wanted to read the book. That's all I remember. I looked on my Kindle and on my Kindle was a medical medium book and I thought, oh yeah, I wanted to read that. Maybe I can read it. And that day I was able to read it. It took me that day and then the next day, but I was able, I almost <laughs> stayed up as long as I could, but it was because it was such like, as I read the book, I felt a sh like a palpable, like I felt this shift, like, oh my God, this is what I've been looking for. This is what I has been missing. It's like, it filled in all these gaps where all that research that I had read and investigated, it filled in all these gaps and it, it was like a, like a ray of light coming from the heavens, really. It really was, but it was just like, you know, the harps playing, <laughs> the angels singing or whatever. It was just like a ray of light and I'm reading this book and I feel this shift and I was like, this is what I have to do. I have to do this. Now, I still had brain fog, so I'm not saying I did it right to start, but what I am saying is that that had to have been divine intervention because when I looked at that Kindle and saw the book there, I thought, I wanted to read this. How did this get here? Now, I don't know if any of you have a Kindle, but in order to get a book onto a Kindle, you have to download it. I mean, you can go buy the book on Amazon, but then you have to pick up your Kindle, turn it on and download it for it to be then on the Kindle. And I had not picked up my Kindle in a really long time, but when I picked it up that day, it was already on there. When I went to look and see like, what do I have to read on here? What's that? I had been too brain fog to read for a long, long time. I didn't remember actually ordering the book at all. I was like, I don't know how this got here, but I'm gonna read it. I don't remember ordering the book. Maybe I did, but there it was on my Kindle. And after I read it on the Kindle, I was like, I have to get this in paperback. I have to get the hardback book. And so I bought the hardback book. And now I have like every, <laughs> I have every, um, every variation of the books. I have it in every format. I have it, uh, the audio books, I have the Kindle version, I have the hardbacks and multiple copies of the hardbacks. Um, and the reason I started doing that is because when I lent, at, at one point, like you can lend a Kindle book out for like two weeks. And when I lent my Kindle book out to somebody, cause I was like, oh my gosh, you gotta read, this is amazing. I'll lend you my copy. And she's like, oh, okay. And then I, as I lent it out, I was like, oh, I can't not have my copy. I need it. I need that book. So I was like, well, I'm just going to get the hardback too. So I will always have a copy no matter what. And then I got more than one copy and I've just con continued that. <laughs> like I always do that with all the books. But, um, 
that had to be divine intervention because how did it get on my Kindle when I hadn't picked up my Kindle in months? I don't remember ordering the book. I remember wanting to read the book when I listened to that summit. I don't remember ordering the book. I'm not saying I didn't because I did have a lot of brain fog. It's possible. I have no memory of it. Like zero zip, not a zilch. And how did it get on the Kindle? divine intervention, man. And the rest, I started using the information in that book, even though I did it imperfectly at first. I did what I could. I started with celery juice. I just, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to do a lot. I thought, you know what? I'm just going to see if I can do this celery juice. That's what I did. I just gave myself permission to do it at whatever pace I needed to. And uh, it worked. I got out of that wheelchair. I got off of that sofa. I was able to shower again. I started being able to make food again. And it's like little steps, little steps, a little bit at a time, little piece here, little piece there, gradually coming back. And I just kept going. And when I did have a little less brain fog, I did go back to the book <laughs> and read it again and realized how much stuff I'd been doing wrong. <laughs> Cause I was like, oh, I see. And that's okay. That's okay because it didn't, because I was doing it and I did take out the no foods and I was, you know what? It doesn't, it's not important that it's perfect. What's important is that you're trying and that you start, right? You start with celery juice, one step at a time, whatever piece you can do, it's different in each person's life, but holy moly. And as I was just saying to my friend, reading the books is so incredibly important. Reading the books yourself is so incredibly important, even if you're brain fogged. And going back to them over time, again and again, because each time you go back to the books, every single time I go back to the books, every single time, and believe me, there is not a day that goes by that I am not interacting with those books in some way, or some piece of the medical medium information, lives or podcasts or the healing path on the website or the website. I'm on that website every day, every day, <laughs> looking up something, looking for something, whatever. It's so important that we interact with the information ourselves and go back to it because each time I go back, I find a deeper level, a new piece, something I missed before or something maybe I needed to be refreshed on or something deeper. It always goes deeper because it's the living word. And the other thing about that is this journey, like I was telling my friend, I'm like, cause you know, we were kind of, a little bit frustrated because people don't want to read, right? People don't want to read. And I get it. There's so much input that it it's hard to want to read. <laughs> There's so much stimulation, sensory stimulation coming at you that it's kind of hard to want to read. But it's so important to read because when I read those books and I've read the books, it gives, it's given me so much and being on this journey has given so much to my life and healed my body and healed my soul and continues to heal my body and heal my soul because there's always more to do. But it's been like the greatest journey of my life and I want that for everybody. Like I just want people to have that and to know what that is and to, because I, I don't have words for what I've gotten out of this path and I just I just want everybody to have it so I'm always like read the books it's the most important thing you can do for yourself it's so important <laughs> and I just I wish that level of healing for everybody because it's it's that soul healing you know that it matters it matters so much and it's given my life so much and it really was divine intervention that brought me to this information. And it seems to be divine intervention that brings 
everybody to this information, at least everybody who really, I think everybody, but not everyone recognizes it, but I think everybody, and especially when people really apply it and you see so many people heal and you're just like, that's from above. That's from above, man. So I just had to share that. Thank you for listening. And I wish you so many blessings on your continued healing journey. Stay curious and I'll see you next time.